In this video we're going to look at an example that lets us create this kind of interesting effect of a stacked twisting shape that you can see on the screen here. The one we're going to draw is more like the one on the right here with this kind of wave in it but on the left here you can see the same principle just using a simple square and what we do is create a set of vectors where one is rotated by a certain amount um, from the original position and in each of those then we cut a pocket and it's that pocket that allows us to stack these up and create this very even twisting shape. There's a number of interesting techniques we can look at in here to do with the drawing of vectors, to do with setting up the toolpaths using the vector selector function in order to sort of semi-automate the recalculation of these toolpaths when we start to duplicate and create all the different pieces that are going to stack together. To begin, let's open a copy of Cut2D Pro. For this video, I'm going to use Cut2D Pro, but this could also be um, completed in Cut2D Desktop, either VCarve Desktop or VCarve Pro, and certainly in Aspire. So we'll begin by setting up our job, click on Create a New File, and I'm going to enter a job size of 21 inches by 21 inches and I want the material thickness to be 9 millimeters, but the inch equivalent of that. And we can use the software's calculation ability within the value box here just by typing 9, so the number of millimeters, multiplied or asterisk i to say that I want to convert that to inches and then hit the equal sign and that gives me the inch equivalent. If I wanted to go in reverse from inches to metric, I could type in the inch value, say 0.25 of an inch, asterisk m to convert it to millimetres, and when I hit equals, I would get the metric equivalent of the inch value that I'd entered. In this case will work with the xy datum in the lower left corner, and hit OK. So the start of our file is going to be a simple square. I'm going to click on the icon to draw a rectangle. Anchor point set to the lower left here, we'll just enter 0, 0, and make a square which is 4 by 4, hit create and close. Now we can centre that, I can either select it and go to the alignment icons and click on the align to material, or the shortcut key for that is F9 on the keyboard. Now what I want to do is add a bit of a wave to each side of this shape. And the easiest way to do that symmetrically is just to edit one side and then to array it around. So let's just select this, click on the icon to zoom selected, and then just use the mouse wheel to back off a little bit there. Now I'm going to pick it, hit N on the keyboard to go into node editing, and I'm going to delete three sides of this. So I'm going to hover over this and right mouse click and say delete span, and you'll see that D is the shortcut key for that, so I can come over here and just hit D on the keyboard and D on the keyboard there. Next I want to add this wave into this, but I want to do it symmetrically, so I'm going to switch on the snap grid to help me. We can access that by going up to Edit, Snap Options, or the shortcut key for that is F4, as you can see there. I'm going to ask the software to create a snap grid with a half inch grid spacing, so we enter in 0.5 and hit OK and hopefully you can see that some small dots have appeared on the screen. Now with that vector selected I'm going to click on N to go into node editing I'm going to hover over it, right mouse click and change that to a bezier or a curve. So when I click on that I get these two handles that I can drag out in order to add this wave shape and by snapping to the snap grid so I can come over one snap grid point and then down three and then here I can come over one point and then up three and you can see the cursor changed there and now I know that I've got a symmetrical wave in that and we can hit the selection mode again I can switch off the snap grid I can hit F4 on the keyboard and just switch that off and hit OK and then to array this around I'm going to say create a circular array of copies I want the rotation centre to be in the middle of the part, which I know because this is a 21 inch by 21 inch part is going to be at 10.5x and 10.5y. I want four copies around 360 degrees. I want to make sure I don't group them so that when I hit copy and close I know that I've got four separate pieces. Now if I now select all these pieces I can join them together and make a single vector. 
Now it's important to understand here that if I'd grouped those objects they'd have appeared to be a single um, object but they wouldn't have been a single vector they would have been four separate objects grouped together by making sure they didn't get grouped I've now got the opportunity to join them rather than grouping them and make a single vector so to join these to essentially join the endpoints together we click on the icon here join open vectors or I could hit J on the keyboard I can enter a tolerance and as long as the endpoints are within that distance they'll join and the software shows me I have four open and afterwards I'll have one closed which is just what I would expect. So this represents the outside of each of our pieces. Now we're going to offset it in to create the wall thickness for our pot. I'm going to select this vector, click on the icon to offset selected vector inwards and we're going to go in by half an inch. I'm going to make sure that uh, none of these options here are checked and just click on offset and close. So now we've got the outside and the inside of each layer. So these vectors represent the shape that we're going to profile around to cut out a part. So I'm going to click on the layer manager and just click on the name here and we'll change that to cut out and hit close. Now I want to make a copy of these in order to create the vectors for the pocket that we're going to machine which is going to allow each layer to locate correctly. So I'm going to select the vectors by dragging a box around them, right mouse click, copy to layer, not move, new layer and we'll call this layer pocket and I'm going to change the drawing colour to be red and hit OK. Now these are overlaying each other at the moment and just so we don't have any confusion I'm going to switch off the cutout layer for a moment you'll see the name changes red because it's still the current layer and now I can choose pocket to make that the current layer so the only vectors I've got drawn are these ones that we just copied onto the pocket layer now I'm going to select those and in order to create the twist in our shape in the pot as we layer these parts up I'm going to rotate this around so with those selected I'm going to click on rotate selected objects I'm going to use the center position so X and Y coordinates should both say 10 and a half and I'm going to use a 9 degree angle now you can choose any angle you want the smaller you get the more gradual the twist will be the larger you get the, the um, more defined the twist will be in this case I um, found the one I cut at 9 degrees looked good so I'm going to hit apply and close and if I just come up and switch on the cutout layer again you can see if I deselect that where that pocket is going to be so as each of these layers up that's just going to cause the parts to twist around as they locate into the one below them as these parts are stacked they're going to effectively inlay onto the part that's below them now with any inlay I need to account for the tool radius of the part in this case I only really need to worry about these internal corners here when we cut this out I'm going to end up with a radius here that means in the pocket I need to emulate the radius that will be left so I'm going to select this vector here and I'm just going to manually radius the corners so to do that um, on just an external corner like this as this is on the interior vector there I just need to offset it inwards and outwards by the radius of the tool I'm going to use so with that vector selected, I'm going to click on the icon to offset selected vectors. I'm going to use a quarter inch M mil, so the radius of that is an eighth of an inch, so we'll enter 0.125 and we're going to offset that inwards. Say delete original and select new and hit offset. So it deleted the original, it selected the new one, and now we just change that to outwards, leave these two options checked here and hit offset again and now if I hit close and deselect that you can see that each of these corners has been rounded and as I say that's going to allow for the fact that when we cut this part out this will also end up with a rounded corner on its internal edge there so now that should fit together as long as we apply some allowance when we pocket that area out. So at this stage I've really got almost all the vectors I need very very simple set of vectors for this part now I can start to think about laying out the pieces uh, that we're going to cut in order to create our stack. So I'm going to hit F on the keyboard and what I want to do is just drag this down to the lower left corner of my material.
but I want to make sure I leave a bit of a gap between it and the edges here so that I can uh, put a screw in the corner in order to hold my material down. You may not need to worry about that if you have a different type of hold down. A couple of different ways I could do that. I could just move the part relative to the zero position. Another way is to use the guides. So I can just click on the ruler here and drag over so that I've got a guide at one inch. Click at the top and drag a guide down to one inch. Then drag and select my vectors. Click again to go into transform mode. Hover over the corner node there and click and drag that down and snap it to those two guides. Now I know that I've got an inch clearance either side there so that I've got space to put a screw in the corner if I want to. To deactivate the guides or to undraw them I just click on the um, square that's at the end of each of the rulers here so that they disappear. Now let's select those vectors again, go back to zoom to fit so we can see what's going on. So I've mentioned the fact I'm planning to screw the material down to a piece of spoil board to hold it on my machine. As well as screwing down the material outside of my shapes, I'm also going to screw down the material inside my shapes and that's just to save me having to cut off and clean up the tabs for the internal squares of each layer. Now to help me locate these, I'm going to drill some pilot holes on my sheet as the first operation that I'm going to cut and then I'll be able to add the screws in the appropriate places and be sure that the tool's not going to collide with them. So I'm going to come over and click draw circle here and what I'm actually going to do is specify a circle of half an inch which should give me plenty of clearance around each screw if I use that as a locating position. Now I'm just going to click in the 2D view, add a couple of these and then close that and I'm going to put those on their own layer. So I'm going to select them both, move to layer, new layer and we'll call this, in fact we'll call this screw holes and I'm going to change the colour of that layer, we'll make that green, we'll make it visible and hit OK. So now we've got three layers, we've got cutout pocket and screw holes and we're going to be able to utilise those when we set up our toolpaths. Because I have the benefit of that layer having been set up like that, what I can do now is just toolpath a single copy of this before I array it use the vector selector for each toolpath and then reapply them once I've arrayed all the vectors and made any additional edits I need for any special layers that I have like the base. So let's click on the icon to go over to the toolpaths tab. Click on the button to do our material setup and at this stage please note that if you do plan to cut this example then make sure that you recalculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling you have available and the material that you plan to use. Here that being said, let's look at the material setup for this. At the moment Z0 is off the top of the block. In this case I'd actually like to go off the table surface so that I get a really nice even clean cutout on the bottom of the part. Material thickness is correct, remember we entered that earlier with the 9mm conversion. XY datum in the lower left, rapid gaps look ok, but I need to raise the start position up to make sure that it will clear the material above zero position there. So let's enter a value of 0.75 and hit ok. So the first toolpath is going to create the pilot holes for my screws to hold the interior parts down for each slice. So to do that I'm going to come up and click on the drilling toolpath. Start depth is going to be zero, that always respects the top of the material, it's not an absolute depth and we're going to enter a value of 0.05 of an inch. So really we're just going to graze the top of the material. I'm going to use the quarter inch end mill we've got selected here and very importantly I'm going to click select closed vectors on the screw holes layer and associate that with the toolpath and that means that when I recalculate it it will remember these rules that I've um, set up for what vectors should be selected. So if we hit close now and drill and we'll enter the name there and hit calculate and you can see that's just created two simple location points which I can now use when I do the setup for this to um, put screws in to make sure that we can hold those interior parts down. That may not be necessary as I mentioned before if you have a different way of holding these parts in place. 
So let's close that. And we'll actually tile the windows here. So we'll use page up on the keyboard to tile the 2D view and the 3D view. Next, I'm going to do the pocket toolpath so that we can create um, the shallow pocket that's going to be used to locate each layer as we stack it up on the one below. So I'm going to click on the pocket toolpath icon. This also is going to have a very low depth. It's literally just to create a lip there and we're maybe going to go something like 0 0.05, 0 0.1 of an inch, um, something like that. It just depends how much you want each layer to inlay into the one below it. So to make sure that this is nice and visible in this case, let's go 0.08 of an inch. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill. We're going to raster, actually we'll offset this pocket here so that it sort of follows the shape of it. And I'm going to enter a pocket allowance. I want to overcut this pocket a little bit to make sure that I create a bit of a space for the parts to locate against each other. So we'll enter a value of negative, which means it will oversize the pocket, 0.0. 0, 0.01 of an inch. and You may want to go a little bit smaller if you want a slightly tighter fit. It's a good idea to cut a couple of experimental pieces if you're not sure what appropriate values are for your particular setup and the material you have. Next we're going to come back to the vector selector again, so very important we're going to create choose closed vectors. This time I'm going to uncheck screw holes and check pocket, check associate with toolpath, close and we'll just call this pocket and calculate. So if we zoom in we can see the toolpath that's that created. I've got a very small piece in there which I may want to just change this and rather than it dipping in and out of those areas we can change the step over of this and maybe make it slightly smaller and that might add a little bit um, more significant part in there. It's really up to you how you want to adjust that for the way that this is going to clean the material out in that pocket. Now the other thing we might want to look at here is if we go in the 2D view and we just select this and click on the drawing um, tab, so F11 on the keyboard and zoom to fit so we can see that there. We'll go back over to the toolpath tab with the icon. Now if I select this toolpath and make sure it's visible here, so make sure the checkbox is on, click on solid, we get a really nice way of previewing that toolpath. It shades in the area it's going to machine. And why this is particularly useful when we're doing something like a negative allowance is I can zoom in and see how much, well make sure first of all that we're overcutting that vector to create the allowance and see how much it's overcutting the edge there. So that looks good. The other thing I can see here is ensure that the radius of the tool here is not going to be relevant to the part because it's overhanging the edge of the piece we're going to cut out. So that's why I haven't had to worry about accounting for that radius only for the internal one. Now we're ready to do our cutout toolpath so we can close the preview, go to the profile here. I'm going to enter a cut depth which is equivalent to the depth of our material so if I type in Z equals then I can pick up that value automatically from the block depth that I've set for the material. For the um, tool here we might want to edit this, change the number of passes so if we go to a pass depth of 0.25 and hit OK I could also change that using the edit, pass, edit passes option so maybe we'd want to set a very thin pass at the bottom um, we could do that with a last pass thickness here or maybe we want to use a compression cutter to cut this part out and that has a minimum of a quarter inch um, depth of cut in order to make sure that we don't create any um, uh, pulling up on the top surface so in that case I might edit the first depth of cut to be 0.26 so it's going to get way further through the material if I'm using that compression cutter that is a safe depth of cut for that and then I'm just going to come around and clean it up with this other pass here. So if we hit OK there the other thing I can do is add tabs to hold the part in place. So if I just zoom in over here at the moment I have no vectors selected and that's because we're using the vector selector so before I add the tabs I need to make sure those vectors are picked so I can click on the selector button close vectors, I'm going to uncheck pocket, check cutout, associate with toolpath close and we'll call this toolpath profile cutout and now I can say add tabs 
and we'll just pop in a couple of tabs, one here and one here and hit close and then we can hit calculate. So now we can preview the pocket if we want to take a look at that, that looks okay and perhaps we want to change the color of that so if we choose the option for toolpath color maybe we'll make that red make it nice and clear and then we can do the profile cutout and preview that and there you can see the part that we're going to get there now there you could hear there's a bit of a pause and that's because I was just looking at the part and I'm thinking that really doesn't resemble what I've drawn certainly this doesn't look thick enough and this shows one of the most important aspects of the software and that's the ability to see what you're going to cut before you cut it so at this stage if that part looks wrong which it certainly does looks way too thin compared to the vectors I can see that visually on the screen here then I should investigate to see what I've done wrong and in this case it looks like I'm just massively overcutting with my profile cutout. So let's double click on the profile cutout toolpath and just have a look down and see if we've missed something when we did the setup for this. So start depth and cut depth look okay, the pass steps were alright. Here you can see though I've got the machine on the vector selected which must have been what I did the last time I used this toolpath and what I want to do is cut outside the vectors. So very very important to check your um, preview and if something doesn't look right go back and investigate to see what's wrong. Now I believe that should be okay but we can have a look down here and just double check everything else. That all looks good so let's hit calculate there we'll reset the preview and then we'll preview all the toolpaths and see if we get something that looks a little better. That I would say certainly seems to match my drawing much more clearly and I believe that part will now be correct. So before we array this out let's just review what we've got here. First operation would be these drill location holes here and here and that would allow me to put screws in and that's going to hold this middle part in place when we cut it out. That means I don't need tabs on the inside here. Next we pocketed and that pocket is literally just creating the location that's going to allow us to inlay it on the part below and create this uh, twisting effect as we build the layers up. Finally we did our cutout pass, we have a couple of tabs here to hold the part in place. I could of course edit those to be any size or thickness I want as appropriate for what I'm doing. So let's close the preview toolpath form, click on the icon to switch to the drawing tab and I'm just going to maximize the 2D view for a second and we'll just zoom to fit. Now what I want to do is make copies of this set of vectors. So if we come over, make sure that's selected first, drag a box around all the vectors, click on create a linear array of copies and I want to make 16 of these so I'm going to make four rows in Y four rows in X and what we're going to do here is create uh, an offset for each of these of five and five so it's going to move each copy over five inches at a time in order to fill up the part so if we say copy we can see everything there and that should give us a nice gap in between each of these now when you do that array make sure that you don't have the option selected to group them together otherwise they'll all end up as a single object and what we need to do is for the software to maintain each of, um, copy on its original layer so it's done that the cutout is on that layer the pocket is on that layer and the drill holes are on that layer what that means is if we click back over to switch to toolpaths tab and just click on this button here to recalculate all toolpaths the software will work through looking at the vector selector in order to pick each uh, different toolpath and assign that to any vectors it finds that fits the set of rules that we've given it. So as long as it finds vectors on the same layers then it's going to apply the toolpaths to those. Now if we look in the 3D view, let's just reset the view there, go into the preview, reset the preview and now preview all the toolpaths, there's the drill locations, there's the pocket, there's the cutout toolpath. So now we've got 16 pieces that are exactly the same, but we need to make edits to a couple of these. 
First one we need to edit is going to be the base. So that literally just needs to be the outside shape with no pocket cut into it at all. And then the first layer that goes onto that needs a slight edit to it to make sure that we miss out these pieces here so that it doesn't um, end up not being able to locate properly. So maybe help a bit better if I show you um, what those edits are. If we close the preview tool pass form there, click switch to drawing tab again. Let's go back to the 2D view and we'll just zoom in on the bottom two here using the mouse wheel. So the first thing is I want to delete the pocket from this one, the inner vector and these two vectors as well. So I'm going to select all of those and hit delete and that's just going to create the base of our stacking tower. So all I want this to do is to be cut out. Now the next level is going to be turned over once this is pocketed and locate on top of that. Now that will work perfectly with the pocket we've got here if I've cut out the same shape um, inner and outer there. However at the moment that little la uh, bit there as I turned this over and tried to locate it on here would get in the way. So I do need to edit one copy of this. The way I'm going to do this is just to offset this inner shape um, in order to create enough space for that to be machined out without me going too far over. So if we take this vector here, offset it inwards by a little bit over the radius of the tool to ensure that it gets out there. And I need to check what level that's been added to. So it's okay, it's on the, um, the I mean layer rather. So that's been put on the current layer, which is the pocket layer there, which is red, which is good. So now we should just be able to delete this one and that means that when that pocket's out it's going to go between those two vectors and that will ensure there's nothing on the inside here and when that part's turned over it will be able to locate on this base shape. After that all the other parts should just turn over and stack on top of each other accordingly. So again I should just be able to switch back to the toolpaths tab, recalculate all the toolpaths, if we hit OK and Go ahead and um, just go into the 3D view there. So just click on the tab, click on preview toolpaths and reset the preview and take a look at those. So preview all toolpaths. And now we can see what's happening. So biggest difference, we've got just the base there. And then as I say, these little inner portions are now missing from this shape because we've pocketed those out. And that means that'll flip over, locate onto here, and then each subsequent section that we've got there will flip over and locate onto the one below it and we could make as many of those parts now exactly the same that would just keep stacking up as high as we wanted. So before we finish up this example let's take a look at the estimated machining time. If that's not something you're familiar with it's a very useful way to get just a general estimate of how long something might take to cut. If we close the preview toolpaths form there we come up and click on summary of all toolpaths including estimated times. If I have no toolpaths visible then it'll just select all of them and show me the total time there at the top. So it's saying 41 minutes for this with the current setup we have and that includes a minute for the drill location holes then my pocket and my profile cut. Now that seems um, quite long for this part so we may want to look at optimizing some of these things certainly we can adjust the rapid rate to be something more sensible perhaps 600 inches a minute then we have something called the scale factor here what this does is it allows me to apply a multiplier to the values that the software is coming up with all the software does is it looks at the length of the toolpath and the speed that I've told it that I'm going to cut them now machines accelerate and decelerate differently so that may or may not be very accurate and if you find the estimate you're getting is not very accurate to reality what you can do is time it and then adjust the scale factor accordingly best thing to do is to start off with this set to one uh, you can see that's now saying this is going to take 20 minutes if I cut this file and it took more like 30 then I know that I should change that scale factor to be say one and a half and you just need to um, find what works best for your particular machine um, for different types of jobs as well so you probably have a scale factor for 2D work maybe a scale factor for V carving or 2.5D work and then maybe also a scale factor for 3D work if you're doing that type of thing. 
Now if I think I can set a faster feed rate, we could close this and maybe we'll come back to the pocket toolpath, edit the tool and say for instance that we can do 180 inches a minute instead and hit OK and calculate. And then maybe on the profile as well, we'll say edit. So I'm just double clicking to go into the toolpath there, hit edit and 180 inches a minute for that. OK and calculate. And now if we close this and come back to the estimate, you can see we're down to 12 minutes. Now, as I say, this may or may not cut in 12 minutes, depending on your setup. But at least now we have a benchmark where I can run this and then I can adjust these values accordingly. Certainly, if I start to enter feed rates that are too high for my machine, that my machine is not capable of achieving, then I'm going to really get some inaccurate estimates from the software because it doesn't know how your machine is going to behave and still you start tweaking the values to make them as realistic as possible. So let's go ahead and close this now. We'll save the file, come up to File, Save As, and in the Project folder we'll just call that Twist Pot and hit save and you can open that and take a look and work with and edit this cut your own version if you want. So that pretty much concludes this video. Here you've seen how we've taken a simple set of vectors that are going to give us this very interesting twisting effect when we stack them up. We've laid them out with the help of the guidelines and the snap grid. We've located them uh, on our part. We've toolpathed a single set of vectors, but used a vector selector for each toolpath so that we were then able to array as many of these as we want and recalculate the toolpaths accordingly. Finally, we made a couple of edits just to make the part work so that we had the base piece and the first part that was going to locate accurately on top of that. Thanks for watching the video.